Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss Chapter 6 of the Easy Builder Pro User Manual. This chapter details window operations and will prepare you to edit, add, or remove new or existing windows within your Easy Builder Pro project. Let's get started by opening an instance of Easy Builder Pro. During this demonstration, I'll be using a CMT3072, but the topics and utilities covered within this chapter are for the most part common and can be used within almost any HMI that you have selected. I'd also like to point out that I also have Use Template selected, as this will give me some pre-configured screens that are important during this demonstration. Before we start inspecting the windows available within our project, we'll need to enable some toolbars that will allow us to do so. To do this, I'm going to select the View tab on top and in the toolbar section, we'll ensure that Window Preview and Window Tree are enabled. With those enabled, I'm going to select the Window Tree toolbar on the bottom left. And after scrolling through our Window Tree, you'll notice that we have nearly 2,000 windows available for use within your project. There are a couple different types of windows within your HMI project. We have our base window. The base window is typically a user-created window, but the term base window might also refer to a background window, a keyboard or pop-up window, or even your project's screensaver. We also have a special type of window accessible in our non-CMTs called the Fast Selection Window. To access this window, select window number 3 on your non-CMT, and you'll notice that this window is a thin vertical column. The Fast Selection Window, as its name implies, is used to quickly select common objects or shortcuts to various windows throughout your project. However, as you'll notice on our CMTs, this window has been replaced with the Monitor Mode window, which will allow you to use our CMT Viewer's Monitor Mode feature. Just below window number 3, we have our Common window. The Common window will allow you to create what are called Common Objects. Any objects placed on this window will be accessible and if configured, visible on any base window within your project. Lastly, our system windows are configured to display automatically under certain situations. For example, if there is a communication error, window number 5, our device no response window, will display. A connection issue between the current HMI and a remote HMI will trigger window 6 and display the corresponding error message. If an operator tried to access an object that was password protected and configured to display a password restriction message, window number 7 would be called in and displayed on screen. Or if the HMI or an external device were to run out of storage, then Window number 8 will display. And it uses the pre-configured system bits to identify which storage device has insufficient space. Our last system window is window number 9, our backup window. This window is used in conjunction with a backup object and will provide feedback when a backup per page or global backup object is triggered. And of course, window number 10 is our current base window and is also configured as the startup window by default. And I think it's important to note that window 3 through window 9 are reserved as system windows within the HMI's project. And although, like other windows, they can be modified, these windows should not be used to perform tasks unrelated to their main function. Also, referring back to our common window, the source of this window can be changed by using a function key or combo button on our CMT series. Now there are two ways to edit windows within your project. We can use our window tree toolbar, or as described in our user manual, we can select the view tab on top. On the right hand side, select open window. 
And here we can create new windows, modify existing windows, or delete certain windows entirely. Because our window tree and open window utilities are similar, we'll focus mainly on our window tree toolbar within this demonstration. Let's go ahead and create our first window. To create a window, we'll first ensure that our window tree toolbar is selected. Next, on any unconfigured window, right click and select New, and a Window Settings dialog will appear. Within this menu, we can give this window a name. A window's name is not only used in the window tree, but also used within certain objects that control window operations, such as function keys, direct windows, combo buttons, and several additional objects, meaning that a descriptive name is important during project development. Just below our window's name, we'll find the window number associated with your new or existing window. The window number is also used in several objects within EasyBuilder Pro, such as our direct window or PLC control object. And although the window number is already established when creating a new window, the window number of an existing window can be changed to a different number as long as you have a separate window open while doing so. Next, we have the window's size. The size of a window can play a large role in your project. For example, if you intend to design a pop-up window that will span a certain width of your current base window, You'll likely want to refer to our ruler utility located in the positioning section of our view tab in order to create a window with the correct size. Just below our window's size, we can define our window's color. On our CMT series, we can also define a window's transparency. Transparency for a window is only used when the window in question is going to lay over a separate window, or as stated, when the window is a pop-up, direct or indirect window, or if the window is going to be used as a custom keyboard. And towards the center, we can define an underlay window. Underlay windows can be used to help give your project a custom background or reduce repetitive object creation. The bottom, middle, and top refer to the order in which the underlay windows are, in a sense, stacked meaning that you have a general project background that is used as the bottom underlay window throughout your project. And certain screens might have different menus, and the menu can be configured as the middle or top layer. A great example of how best to use underlay windows can be found within the CMT demo project located within the installation directory of EasyBuilder Pro. Next, you'll notice the Monopoly button. The Monopoly button is used to give a pop-up or embedded window monopoly over the HMI screen, meaning that an operator will be forced to physically interact with that specific pop-up instead of moving it out of the way to work on what lies behind it. This feature might be used in combination with a system alarm or during system setup. And last but not least, we have our window-specific macro triggers. These can trigger a specific macro when the page opens or closes, or you can even configure a macro to cycle periodically every half second only when this page is open. And with that out of the way, we'll take a look at some of these features in a demo project. On our display, we have a basic project that will illustrate some of the features that we've discussed. Now, at first glance, it appears as if my startup window is an unmodified project window. However, by heading to our View tab and enabling Underlay Window on the left-hand side, we'll notice several objects that will appear on this window, all thanks to our Underlay Windows. Although it's important to note that even though these objects are visible, you'll still need to navigate to their respective windows to make a modification to them. Let's open our Startup Windows Settings menu, and, and here you'll notice that I've configured Window 12 as our bottom underlay window, and Window 13 as our middle underlay window. 
And with that said, let's navigate to window 12 and take a look at our bottom underlay. So we've got a couple of different objects here. We have a few buttons on the lower left hand corner. And although these aren't labeled, one will trigger a pop-up window and the other will trigger an embedded window. And we also have a couple of basic text objects, a graphic object with the gradient color configuration, and our little fish on the right hand corner. I tried to get a little creative with this one as I really wanted to demonstrate how windows can be layered in Easy Builder Pro. And you might have noticed that our little fish on the home screen appears to be covered by water. To accomplish this, I used window 13 as our middle underlay window and placed our water graphic in the same location as our fish. And you'll also notice that I've placed our embedded window on this page as well which will display window number 11. Selecting window 11, you'll notice our fisherman. And what's really special about this window is that our background will completely disappear thanks to a special feature on our CMTs that will allow us to set transparency on our pop-up and embedded windows. This can be configured in our Windows Settings menu. And I've also configured the transparency for our pop-up window and enabled our Monopoly setting. And now that we have an overview of our configuration, let's run a simulation. With my simulation open, you'll notice that our startup window is a combination of three separate windows. We have our bottom underlay, which houses our fish and trigger objects. The middle underlay, which covers our fish and houses our direct window and our startup window, which hosts both windows and also gives us our background color. Triggering my embedded window, you'll notice our fisherman has a completely transparent background. In other words, only the objects are visible. And the same can be said for our pop-up window, which you'll notice has a transparent background as well. And I'd like to point out that since our pop-up window is configured to have monopoly over our screen when present, we no longer have control over our embedded window or any other objects within our project until we acknowledge this window. Let's go ahead and close our simulation and we'll navigate back to our project startup window. The next utility I'd like to demonstrate from our user manual is our opacity setting found within the view tab. Now, by default, it's configured at 50%, but let's see what happens when we change this to 90%. And we'll bring it back down to 10%. Opacity, or layer opacity, will change the opacity of objects in our underlay and common windows in reference to the current base window selected. This can help you place objects in an appropriate location while referencing the windows and objects that lie in the background. Next, we'll cover a few tips that will help you design your project and then finish our demonstration by reviewing some of the system windows that we discussed in the beginning. Section 6.5.1 discusses something that I receive a lot of questions about. Occasionally, when building your project, you may want to place objects outside of the display area. I myself do this when making notes using our static text objects so that I remember to delete certain objects or to give more information to someone reviewing my work. And though this is convenient, you may also want to place non-static objects outside of your work area. As an example, perhaps you don't want translucent objects such as timers or Objects that work when the window opens or closes, such as set bits on your display. Objects like these can be placed on the side or anywhere within the surrounding work area, and they will still function as intended. With our view tab still open, let's ensure our ruler is enabled. Then I'm going to navigate to our home tab, and we'll take a look at a few last features. If you've been using Easy Builder Pro for a while, then you're probably well acquainted with our selection tool. 
However, many of you may not be aware that we have a couple additional tools that might help in certain situations. As an example, on the top left corner, you'll find an arrow icon that's labeled Select. Clicking the down arrow right below it will reveal a couple useful utilities, such as our hand tool, which can be used to navigate around your project and select different objects as well. We also have a shortcut that will allow you to select all objects on your display, which can be helpful in the event that you want to select and copy every object on a specific window, including those not found within your display area. Moving on, we'll take a look at one of my most favorite features, our ruler. The ruler not only allows us to measure the distance between certain objects, but by double-clicking anywhere on the ruler itself, we can create what's called a guide. A guide is a vertical or horizontal alignment tool that will allow objects to essentially snap into certain positions. Once created, guides can be moved or deleted and will also appear on each window throughout your project. Each guide you create and their position are also saved when you save and close the project, allowing you to pick up right where you left off on the following workday. This can be incredibly useful for aligning objects on multiple pages and can help give your project a professional and well-organized appearance. The last tool I'd like to discuss from our manual is called Quick Copy. Quick Copy, as its name implies, allows you to copy and paste a single object multiple times by simply holding the control key and dragging the selected object. Now let's take a look at some of our system windows. On screen I have a basic demo project that will allow us to display three different system windows. Our device no response window, the backup window, and the password restriction window. Let's start off by triggering our device no response window. To do this, all I'm going to do is unplug my Ethernet cable. And as you can see, our HMI automatically displays the device no response window. The HMI will trigger this window under several different conditions. When the connection is disrupted, as in our example, when the IP address is incorrect, or if there is a tag issue, referring to our tag-based PLCs, of course, to name a few. Next, I'll trigger our backup window, and because there isn't a whole bunch of data to back up, the backup is very quick, and the window itself disappears in less than a second. Finally, we'll take a look at our password restriction window. This window will notify an operator that they don't have the proper credentials to access the object in question. And that covers Chapter 6 of our Easy Builder Pro User Manual. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.